So hello and welcome back. Our first configuration and everything is finally set up and we can now start writing uh, test cafe code and test cases etc and we can dive into it. So step one and we need to create a folder where we will actually store all of our test files. So I think the good idea would be in the middle of the project. Let's create a folder and we should name it tests or some of you might use it uh, as keyword spec but I prefer to use tests but again it's completely up to you and inside tests let's create for example basic.test.js file and again you can name it whatever you like I just like to keep it basic and here I'm gonna show you the very important basics of uh, test cafe so basically if you want to write a test cafe test uh, on the top you can import some stuff from test cafe and one thing which we will be using very often is selector so i want to import selector from test cafe well right now we have access to the selector class so how do we start i think if you are familiar with such for example cypress or puppeteer or selenium you will typically be using voca or jest as a test runner but in test cafe you don't need to do it because test cafe has its own test runner which is built in it also has its built-in assertions library so everything is taken care of and it kind of uses its own syntax of launching a fixture and the keyword for that is as i mentioned right now is fixture so right now we need to type fixture and here we can specify uh, what type of the test it is or the description of the test so i can call getting started with test cafe and I'm gonna make the capital T and this is a description for this basic test file basically for the fixture we should say and remember to use these backticks it's very important and then we can specify the keyword page and here we can pass the URL address which we want to load at the beginning of the test you know so I have prepared for you this the dev express that give up io actually I, I didn't make it uh, the test cafe team did it because here we can practice everything about the test, ca test cafe testing so let's grab this url address and let's paste it inside oops and as you can see uh, the Right here is actually auto formatting it in a very weird way, which I don't like. So I'm gonna put it like this. And to actually prevent right here to auto formatting these fixtures in the wrong way, because of course uh, this is the common problem that this fixture page format is unknown for the right here. So for this particular case, I want to flag it as pretty ignore and it will leave it and it will not auto format this so i'm gonna call pretty dash ignore and that's pretty much it and actually i've made a slight mistake it should be also in backticks and now if i save it now it's completely fine you have the fixture and the name of the fixture which is something like a description and then you have the page and here again in the backsticks you will specify the url address which we should load at the beginning of the test and right now let's go down below the fixture and we want to use the keyword test and i think most of you already know what it means the test is a block of code where we can specify all the test cafe actions 
which are later executed inside the scope of the test. Basically, the fixture is the definition for uh, uh, that test test file, or the file might be a test suite which contains uh, multiple tests. And again, each test has its own description. So for this first, we can give it a description such as my first test cafe test. And here I need to call async because we will be using with the async await syntax and asynchronous functions. And here I need to specify the test controller. And the typical convention is to use the letter T. And here goes test cafe code. And you don't want to name it T. Actually, you want to name it T, but you don't need to. You can specify it as a page or browser or test cafe, whatever. But the typical convention is to use the key, uh, the key T. And now let's start with writing our first test case. So if I go here uh, in this website, I'm going to write a test which will actually fill the name into this your name input and it will submit it. So while well, to do it, we need to inspect the web page and we need to find the selectors. <clears throat> and as you can see, we have our DOM tree, which contains all the selectors. Uh, if I, for example, hover on the main form, it will highlight the main form. If I hover on this button, it will actually uh, highlight this button populate. And I believe somewhere here is a button submit, which is now disabled. But when we fill, fill the name here, it will actually become visible to submit. And you can see we have mul multiple like options. We can use name. We can use values, classes, but in test automation, always it's the best to use IDs. You can sometimes use XPaths, but XPaths are actually very slow, so it's not recommended. And the fastest way to locate the selectors in the test run is to use IDs. So if we inspect this label, or I mean input, we find that it's input of ID developer name. So let's take it and let's copy it and let's go back into our Visual Studio code and here I want to specify our first test code so because we are using async await I want to call await and now I want to use t because I want to tell the test controller hey please do the function I am using so as you can see uh, here in the hint, it says the test control that type text, and uh, I want to use type text because if you want to use text or put a value into some input, you gotta use type text. And now it asks us for two parameters, and first is the selector, and because we are using IDs, we need to put this number mark here. If you would use classes, you just need to use dot, and etc but we are using IDs. So we want to tell the test cafe, hey, load this website. And inside the first test, I want to tell the controller to uh, use the type text function and type text inside this selector, which we know is that input. And now I want to specify the value. So for example, we can call some name here, for example, John. And all what this does, it's actually load the website and it will fill this value with the input of John. And if you try it here, you fill John. And if you scroll down, you now see that the submit button is no longer disabled and we can now inspect it. And as you can see, it's a button and it has an ID of submit button, so we can use it. So the second step we want to tell the test controller to do is await t dot click because we want to simply click on that submit button. So now specify where we want to click. 
you want to click on the ID of submit button. Now save it and that's pretty much it. You see the naming convention for T means I name my test control T and I can now type it as a T instead of using for example test controller and type it like this. It would work but it's not necessary. The typical convention is just to use the letter T. So we can leave it like this and our test case is pretty much done. But how to actually run it? Yeah, good question, simple answer. Just go to package.json and we, here we have our test script. And first thing you need to do is to remove this statement and we need to type the actual test script for this. So if you want to run the test, you simply need to call the test cafe and then you need to specify the browser which you want to use. You have multiple options. You can use Chrome, Safari, Firefox. You can use pretty much any browser which is installed on your computer. Of course, when you are running the tests inside CircleCI or another continuous integration tool, you can download the browsers during your script and use whatever browser you want. But when you are running locally, you need to use those browsers which you all have installed. In my case, it's for example Chrome. And then I need to specify uh, what files I want to, to run or execute. And now we just need to run the test. So let's go into terminal and type npm run test. And as you can see, it has spin up the Chrome browser. It's navigated to website, filled the form and submitted it. Actually, it was pretty fast. It took only two seconds. But as you can see, our test was successful. And I think that's pretty much it for this video. We haven't used the selector yet. Uh, I'm going to show you it in the later video how to use it and actually what it is but i think we did a pretty good job uh, as you can see writing test cafe test is super easy and everything is like straightforward so i think you did a good job uh, if you have any problems uh, feel free to contact me and i will try to resolve it but i think you should not have any problems but you know you never know so I congratulate you, you have actually written your first test cafe test and I'm gonna see you in the next video.